What's up, YouTube? Back at you with another video, another quick take. I got my main man, my partner, my brother here. I always say it's great to be on here, but, you know, unfortunately, we got to do another topic like this. But, you know, I am the most charismatic man. Thanks for having me again, bro. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Um, So let me just preface the article by saying um something that I've said before on other videos, which is that I don't relish in these topics at all. And the reason why I even have these discussions is to offer a perspective that I don't see other people talking about. So we have an article courtesy of abc.go.com, which says Sonia Massey, woman killed in home by police, died by homicide with gunshot to head. The autopsy shows. The article goes on to say Sonia Massey, the Illinois woman fatally shot by a deputy while responding to her 911 call, died by homicide due to a gunshot wound to her head, according to an autopsy report released Friday by the Sangamon County Coroner. Though the autopsy report did not state the manner of death, Sangamon County Coroner Jim Allman, Allman confirmed it was homicide. The cause of death, gunshot wound of the head um it says the bullet that killed massey age 36 entered at the lower eyelid of her left eye and exited through the posterior left surface of her upper neck according to the aut autopsy report uh, massey's family held a press conference in springfield illinois friday after the autopsy report was released uh saying sonia met the world to me i loved her so much this tragedy has been so much on my family her kids her daughter Cannot sleep at night, Shadia, uh, Shadia Massey, Sonia Massey's cousin said, this is the hardest thing we have ever been through as a Massey. It just breaks my heart that our family has to go through this. She is the only family member that me and my wife was talking last night about. I've never once seen her, seen her angry or mad, Raymond Massey, Sonia Massey's uncle said. She was always full of love and she loved her kids and God. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who is representing Massey's family, said that the autopsy report is further evidence that the shooting was unjust. The autopsy confirmed what everybody already knew with the video, Crump said at the press conference, that this was just a senseless and unnecessary excessive use of force. Completely unnecessary, certainly not justified. Uh, Sean Grayson, the former Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy, who shot Massey was fired and charged with three counts of first degree murder, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct in Massey's death. He pleaded not guilty. The first night I don't go to my mother's house. This happens. Uh, Sonia Massey's son said at the press conference, he said, how, why? And I wonder if I was there, if he would have done anything to me. Massey and a second unnamed unnamed deputy responded to Massey's 911 call, reporting a possible intruder at her Springfield home on July 6th. Body camera footage released Monday shows Grayson, age 30, yelling at Massey to put down a pot of boiling water. The footage reviewed by ABC News shows Massey telling the two responding deputies, please don't hurt me, once she answered their knocks on her door. Grayson responded, I don't want to hurt you. You called us. Later in the video, while inside Massey's home, as she searches for her ID, Grayson points out a boiling pot of water on her stove and says, we don't need a fire while we're in here. Massey then pours the water into the sink and tells the deputy, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Grayson threatens to shoot her, according to the video. And Massey apologizes and ducks down behind a counter, covering her face with what appears to be a red oven mitt. She briefly rises and Grayson shoots her three times in the face. The footage shows. The footage is from the point of view of Grayson's partner because Grayson did not turn on his own body camera until after the shooting, according to court documents. A review by Illinois State Police found Grayson was not justified in his use of deadly force. Grayson was discharged from the Army for misconduct, according to documents obtained by ABC News. And I'm assuming this was before the fact. ABC News has also learned that Grayson was charged with two DUI offenses in Illinois in August 2015 and July of 2016. Uh, Grayson's attorney... 
Dan Foltz declined to comment. The news of his discharge and DUI offenses comes days after it was revealed through Illinois law enforcement training and standards board records obtained by ABC News that Grayson worked for six law enforcement agencies over the last four years. Man, all right. So I want to approach this topic a little bit different because it honestly goes without saying what our reactions are to that particular situation because we've talked about this type of thing so many different times on this channel. And the only reason why I even want to talk about it again is because I have a different perspective. So before I get your thoughts, I really just want to jump over to the statement from President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. I want to just get their statements. I want to give just my thoughts and then I want to get yours. And then I guess we'll go from there if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So statement from President Joe Biden on Sonia Massey. So he said, Sonia Massey, a beloved mother, friend, daughter, and young black woman should be alive today. Sonia called the police because she was concerned about a potential intr intruder. When we call for help, all of us as Americans, regardless of who we are or where we live, should be able to do so without fearing for our lives. Sonia's death at the hands of a responding officer reminds us that all too often black Americans face fears for their safety in ways many of, of the rest of us do not. Sonia's family deserves justice. I am heartbroken for her children and her entire family as they face this unthinkable and senseless loss. Jill and I mourn with the rest of the country and our prayers are with Sonia's family, loved ones and community during this devastating time. I commend the swift actions that were taken by the Springfield State's attorney, Attorney's Office while we wait for the case to be prosecuted. Let us pray to comfort the grieving. Congress must pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act now. Our fundamental commitment to justice is at stake. Um, and I'm going to read uh, Kamala Harris's statement. Uh, Sonia Massey deserved to be safe. After she called the police for help, she was tragically killed in her own home at the hands of a responding officer sworn to protect and serve. Doug and I sent strength in prayers to Sonia's family and friends, and we join them in grieving her senseless death. Our thoughts are also with the communities across our nation whose calls for help are often met with suspicion, distrust, and even violence. The disturbing footage released yesterday confirms what we know from the lived experiences of so many. We have much work to do to ensure that our justice system fully lives up to its name. I join Joe Biden or President Biden in commending the swift action of the state's attorney office and in calling on Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, a bill that I co-authored in the Senate. In this moment, in honor of Sonia's memory and the, and the memory of so many more whose names we may never know, we must come together to achieve meaningful reforms that advance the safety of all communities. All right. Um, now, here are my thoughts on the statements made by President and Vice President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Okay, these motherfuckers are full of shit. And I'm just being completely honest with you. I'm not sure if they use AI to make these statements, chat GBT or Joe Biden made his and then, you know, Kamala Harris had somebody just paraphrase his, but it's it's complete baloney. And honestly, as a black person, a black man, black citizen, I'm just sick and tired of this shit happening. And for anybody who's still listening at this point, you can literally go back on my videos and you can see for as long as I've had a YouTube channel, I've always talked about this, this sort of thing. And not because, again, I'm interested in views or anything like that is because I genuinely care enough about it to have these thoughts and opinions and to take time out of my day to just try to enlighten and inform people on what's going on. Um, For them to be president and vice president of the current administration in this country right now this shit has been going on 
since the early 2010s. Now, don't get me started on this country's long, you know, ignorance towards, you know, the life and times of the modern day black, you know, man, woman, child and elder. Let's just say for the sake of the last decade or so, nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Nothing has fucking happened. To me, honestly, it doesn't get much worse than a, a, a white guy going to a supermarket with an assault rifle, shooting 11 black people, walking up to the white cashiers and saying, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm here to kill them. And nothing happening as a result of that. Nothing happened. So for President Biden to say, Congress must pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act now. Now, let's go back and, and pull this up real quick. Because again, I want to pull out all the receipts. I want this to be a definitive, enlightening conversation for people so they don't see these statements from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and think that these motherfuckers actually care. Because they don't. They don't. Because in fact, all that statement really should have been is we are looking into, you know, passing an act right now with some teeth. Because the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act of 2021, that shit has no teeth whatsoever. And let's say even if they did pass that shit, we would still be having these instances right now. But just, just the countless amounts of time, times that black people are killed in police fucking custody. It's so fucking redundant that I'm literally numb to it at this point. Like legit, I didn't watch the video. I didn't really see anything. I just heard about it, and then I'm seeing people talking about this shit, and the conversation is literally just, we want justice. We're praying for them. This, that, and a third. It's like, yo, strength and prayers have gotten black people nowhere as far as this conversation is concerned. Now, back to the act. What this act is supposed to do, verbatim, according to congress.gov, it says, this bill addresses the addresses a wide range of policies and issues regarding policing practices and law enforcement accountability. It increases accountability for law enforcement misconduct, restricts the use of certain policing practices, enhances transparency and data collection, and establishes best practices and training requirements. The bill enhances existing enforcement mechanisms to remedy violations by law enforcement. Among other things, it does the following, which it doesn't do a whole fucking lot. It says, lowers the criminal intent standard from willful to knowing or reckless to convict a law enforcement officer for misconduct in a federal prosecution limits qualified immunity as a defense to liability in a private civil action against a law enforcement officer and grants administrative subpoena power to the department of justice in pattern or practice investigations. In other words, it does nothing. It does nothing. Nothing about what I read just now, and mind you, they didn't even pass it because Republican, Republicans apparently had a problem with it. This does not stop guys like this dude, whatever his, the white guy that did that, and then the other, you know, countless amounts of freaking police officers who have done the same thing in the past and are still doing the same thing actively right now. Because like I said again, and like I've always said, these things happen every day to people. It's just that every so often we we one of them makes nationwide media every once in a while. And I'm pretty sure they pick and choose which ones they are going to, you know, let pass through to CNN, Fox, ABC, so on and so fucking forth. And I'm pretty sure they're going to use this as a as like a token for the upcoming election right now. I've said for so long that what what a, a real policing act needs to do. First of all, you need to hold the entire, you know, like police department of the offending officer accountable for the acts of that one guy. So meaning if you employed this guy, then everything that he does out in the streets, you're getting hold, held accountable too for that. So, so basically, so let's say if I work for a police department and I'm a white guy, if I go out and I shoot a fucking black person, then that means I'm affecting negatively the pay of every single police officer that works in that department because they're going to have to pay restitution for shit like that. You're going to have to come out of pocket. So so let's say if there is a settlement out of court or whatever, that's not going to come from the federal government. That's not going to come from taxes 
from regular people. No, it's going to come out of the pocket of that police department. Hold them accountable because you are public servants. So if you're killing the people you're supposed to be serving, you got to pay for that now because it's a business. It's a government funded business. So then that means we are putting money back into. So it's like the taxes that you pay as a as a citizen that pays for these services because the 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 police department, law enforcement, that is a service that is provided to citizens, you know, by the fucking government. So if they are abusing those services and not actually serving people, then they're going to have to pay up and put that money back where it came from. That's one. Two, they sh first of all, there should there shouldn't even be an on and off switch to body cameras. That's another thing. Agreed. Three, there is no really like investigation. And I do think that they they are doing a better job because they immediately fired this guy. You know, he's already being charged and all of that. But to me, it, sh it should be automatic like jail. You know, in my opinion, like there is no discussion, you know, to be had, especially if there's video of this shit. The fact that, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they care so much. Right. So then why is it that, you know, uh, uh, this this act has just been sitting there for three years because they introduced the shit in what? February 24th, 2021, where it's it's July 26th of 2024. Nothing has happened yet. And I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not ignorant enough to say that it's just Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's fault, but it's the fault of the system. So it's not necessarily his or her fault. I mean, do I think they should be pushing for, for it more? Yeah. Is it a priority for them? No, because like I've been saying since the start of this fucking YouTube channel, that black people are literally third class fucking citizens in this country. Because you do not see this shit happening to any other race of people in this fucking country but black people not whites not asians not latinos not indians you only see the shit repetitively happening to black people and the reason why i care is because it could happen to anybody at any given fucking time and i'm gonna let you go in a second but i also just want to say this that this shit almost happened to me long story short for people who are listening my girlfriend was pulled over by the cops. We're in Queens. She got pulled over, driving a little too fast, one, two o'clock in the morning. Cop comes up. You, you, uh, uh, you, you burn the red light. Let me see your license and registration. You know what happened? Another cop car came, pulled up. Three cops came. They pulled me out the car. They were asking me questions. I wasn't even driving. I wasn't doing I, I was the one that was like oh shit you burn that red light it's two o'clock in the morning i'm looking around like oh shit where are the cops at because you can't do that they pulled me out the motherfucking car asking me questions mad hostile and the only reason why they stopped questioning me was because i had a car full of friends right there right there when i said oh we just came from karaoke all my friends are right there they looked across the street they stopped they stopped I wasn't even the one driving the car. So that's what I'm saying. That could happen to anybody at any given fucking time. People only seem to want to care is when shit starts happening to them. I'm not going to wait for shit to happen to me for me to start kicking and screaming for fucking change, for fucking legislation. And we haven't gotten that shit yet. So my main issue with this now is I'm holding people accountable. Because if we're going to be on social media and we're going to be, you know, reposting memes and talking about how sad it is and, and prayers and we need justice and blah, 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 blah. Like make it a definitive fucking conversation. If you're not talking about, yo, we need real legislation, not that little bullshit George Floyd justice and policing act that y'all made, but some real shit, shut the fuck up. Just literally just shut up. Seriously, seriously, because you're, you're honestly wasting your rep because a lot of you niggas that are talking about this shit, you're not going to talk about it next year. You're not going to be talking about that shit next fucking year. I'm so tired of people dying and then it's literally just some shit we talk about for a week, two weeks, until the next person dies and we start talking about them. When are we going to actually collectively say the same thing that actually matters? The government's not going to do anything with prayers and strength. Oh, yeah, I'm praying for them. And then even if they cut them a check and say, okay, the state of wherever this happened at is going to now pay them $5 million. 
you know, for the death of 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 Sonia Massey. That's not going to stop the same shit from happening to somebody else. So this is what I'm saying. So people, if you're going to use your voice, because social media provides everybody a platform and a voice to say something. And I wish, again, I was famous where people could actually hear me saying this shit. Use your voice to say, we need legislation. We need laws. We need a real act. Just like how Asian people got exclusive legislation for them. And just like how the Constitution and Bill of Rights and all that shit applies to white people. You know what I'm saying? And freaking Latinos, Indians, Asians, all that shit. We need some shit exclusively for us. Because clearly, the Bill of Rights, Constitution, fucking 14 Amendments, all that shit does not apply. That does not apply. Because again, if I didn't have friends there, yo, trust me, bro. That shit that happened with me and the police, that shit would have went way worse. Went like, way worse. And it yeah. wasn't even like I was bugging. I wasn't even bugging out. I, I was just like, yo, like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, hey, whoa. Because in my mind, I'm like, yo, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Fortunately, again, I was blessed enough to have people right there in that moment. So it didn't get ugly. That's all I'm saying. So we need to talk about real shit. People, it's like the government has its place. The people have their place too. Ask for something. It's like, ask and you shall receive. I see everybody liking shit, 50,000 likes, 30,000 retweets and shit. You niggas ain't asking for nothing. You niggas are talking about prayers, asking for justice. Well, what kind of justice? The justice has to come in the form of something. Don't just say, oh, we need justice. That you will, okay. All right, yeah, we're going to cut them a check. That's it. No, we need some shit. And if the conversation is not going to be about that, stop that fucking corny shit. Knock it the fuck off. Because again, you know you're only just talking about it because it's just in the moment. It's just in the moment. You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, I, I apologize for going that long, bro. What are your thoughts on that? No, you're right. You hit everything on the head. And, you know, I, I did a little research about this when you, when you brought it up. And even just now, I thought, you know, we, it's been a couple days. So let me see what was going on. I haven't seen that one major news article about this besides one or two. I haven't seen any press. I haven't seen any coverage. You know, and this is the this is the thing, you know, like you said, we're, we're sick and tired and sick and tired of doing topics like this. Yeah. And yet we're the only people who really, you know, do dives on, on topics like this. Now, I'll say this, you know, I had a similar experience not too long ago, too. Now, it wasn't anything bad, but, you know, I went to a basketball game with uh, you know, my brother's basketball game. And one of the guys that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of cool with, you know, we're not friends, but I know him. He knew these two officers and they pulled over. He started talking and we all laughing and stuff. And towards the end, I'm being respectful. I said, all right, have a good day, officers. And they, they start laughing at me. And I, I told them, they was like, yo, you don't got the officers, black officers. They say, oh, yo, come on, man. You don't got to do all that. You know, you know, we brothers too. But in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, just because we the same skin color don't mean nothing. Because there was an incident, I think, last year where there was a, a, a black guy who got pulled over in the traffic stop and a bunch of black officers beat him up. So this is the thing, you know, a lot of people need to realize any situation can, to, can turn deadly for you, especially when you're a black person. You could be smiling and having a good time. And then, you know, lo and behold, they, they pull out that gun. And, you know, this is that that this is the issue with our community, because topics like these isn't going to stop or incidents like these aren't going to stop until we get actual reform. So people. You know, people like to talk about politics, Joe Biden, this, Kamala, Trump. It doesn't matter who you vote for. At the end of the day, we have to get people in awful suits actually going to look out for us, right? Because this this been going on too long. There's no yeah. laws for us. Now, if you're LGBT, uh, if you're Muslim, if you're Asian, there's laws to protect you, black people. It's been how many decades and centuries we've been getting our, our, our ass handed to us and we still don't got anything? That's the problem. And I think, you know, one thing I will say is, you know, I, I do think that George Floyd uh, bill or whatever the case may be, it might be a start. But again, we have to continually push for more. And, you know, this is the, 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 the problem with me that I see is that people are quick to talk about, you know, which black celebrity got who pregnant and, oh, how much money he got compared to you. But we're not talking about issues like this that actually are meaningful, because if this was you or your family, you think LeBron gives it? Uh, no disrespect, to LeBron. I'm just using him as an example. But you think LeBron cares? You think uh, Fifty Cent would care? And this is the conversations we have to have. 
you know, and unfortunately, like I said, this is not the the viral clips that a lot of people are looking for. So they're not going to talk about it. But right. again, like you said, it might happen to you one day. I, I'm not praying on this on anybody, but obviously it's happening still. So, mm. you know, I, I, I'm glad that uh, the officer was swiftly uh, right. uh, picked up and he's in custody. But the only reason why that happened is because of COVID and what happened with George Floyd. If that didn't happen, this officer would be outside drinking pina coladas on his doorstep. So, Facts. you know, at the end of the day, for me, you know, we got to continue these conversations. And, you know, I, it, like I said, I'm, I'm tired of covering stuff like this. Uh, we've had numerous episodes on, on my podcast and your YouTube channel about yep. this very same topic. Yep. And it's just, you know, it, it's just, it's not fun. And no matter how much you try to lighten the situation, how much you try to be positive and look at, you know, what can bring of change. Like Tupac said, you know, I see no changes. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, we need to wake up. We, we need to wake up. We, we care more about celebrity gossip than we do about our own people and what's going on. So, you know, people do your research and, and take this stuff seriously because any chance something happens to you, you're going to want people to take that seriously. So, you know, we haven't had that situation for us yet, but yet we still talk about it because at the end of the day, this is a reality for a lot of black people. And if you don't believe that, go to the morgue. Go to the cemetery and let me know how you change. Or just fucking run a fucking red light. And then you're going to see the difference between the way that you're treated and spoken to versus, you know, the next race. And right. I want to bring it back to a podcast episode that I did back in 2020. And towards the end of the episode, we were saying how, you know, if the government is not going to do anything, then we need to create resources for ourselves in those situations. So let's say, for example, what pretty much prevented my situation from getting worse was the fact that I had people there see what and I wasn't even the one that mentioned this at least I don't think so I don't have to watch the episode again but what we ended up saying was that like there should be like an app that people have on their phones so if you feel nervous around a police officer or something for black people or even just people who support black people and want to have our backs type shit that you could have somebody pull up like so it's like it's almost like let's say like a ways type shit or whatever and then it's like you know, like, like a distress button or a duress button or some shit. And then you press that, anyone who's in the neighborhood who's in the area will come and be there for you. Because a lot of times when you're by yourself in a situation and they feel like, oh, this person is by themselves and they don't have nobody, that makes them even more of a target because I don't have to worry about somebody else being a witness to the shit. As far as I know, because again, I haven't watched the video and I don't want to watch it. She was there by herself. I as far, as far as I know, but let's I say if, if, if she has something like that, where she could just press the button and then people are going to be there like, hey, hey, how you like, they'll have. All right. So it's like you press the button. People will have your picture, your name, your information and shit like that. And then your location. And then it's, it's almost like like how like Uber is type shit. We're like, you need an Uber. So you could just immediately get in touch with an Uber driver who's like two minutes away. He's right there. Like first responders type shit. So we need somebody there just to be there. Like, hey, I'm here for this person. What's going on type shit. Police ain't going to want to do nothing now. You know why? Because there's strength in numbers. He's not going to shoot everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? So imagine if in a situation like that, there was five people, freaking 10 people that showed up for her. She's going to walk out alive instantly. Because again, us as black people, the government obviously never had our best interest since we got here. Since we were brought here, even the black people that were, that were originally here still didn't even have any motherfucking rights. So right. if they're not going to give us anything, we have to create something for ourselves. And I'm pretty sure somebody out there has the ingenuity to say, wow, you know what? Let me take this idea and do something about it. Because honestly, that's just one of the very few options that we have. And, and a good one at that, because again, like I said, a, a police officer, because at that point, like, let's say if. A police officer were to, were, to, were to be in that same situation. Five people show up and then he's all threatened and shit like that and he shoots everybody. Then that turns into a mass shooting. Then what does that tell you? What does right. that tell you? That's what I'm saying. Like you, you, it's like, like I, I look at it like it's only but so long you can talk about the problem. Now it's like, well, what are the solutions? And literally that's it. I don't even know. Like, honestly, I would literally try to come up with some shit like that if I could. Like whoever is an app developer or some shit like that. And it's like, however I could create an app like that, I genuinely would. 
or I would link up with somebody that could. Because that's right. the era that we're living in a digital era now. And even then, people still commit crimes anyway. You got mad laws out here. And people are still getting shot, killed, yep. murdered, all of that stuff. So even if, let's say, they did make an act with some teeth, you still got racist cops out here. They're not going to give a fuck. They're still going to shoot people anyway. That's he true. knew. He, I'm pretty sure he knew that it was a rap for him. But he still did it anyway because this is how, and I'm not saying all white people, but this is how they feel about us. And it's just going to come out in that type of situation. Right. That's now, that, literally that is the option. But go ahead, bro. No, no, you're right. And let me just bring back the two points you mentioned. The body cameras. 100% agree. There's no excuse in 2024 that no police force, every cop shouldn't have a body camera. That is a necessity because at the end of the day, if they don't have that, it's your word against theirs. And we all know the justice system favors the police. So, you know, those body cameras are very important. If a police officer ever turns them on, they need to go back to the office immediately. You need, they should not be out there patrolling with no camera off. And even if the, the uh, office or the police department says we don't have the budget for it, well, somebody need to create one because we can't be having cops out here. Unfortunately, this is the unfortunate side. And I'm not going to be the person that dog on all police because I know some police officers who, who are being uh, well-meaning. But at the end of the day, when you have the power to end somebody's life, you know, everybody got to, you know, get on the program. So those body cameras, every police officer needs them. Uh, if you're going to be out on the street, you definitely need them. There's no excuse why it's all off the battery died. No, you got to need to charge it because we don't have that same luxury. And two, uh, one thing about Biden and, and Kamala Harris, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I want to make this political, but Come on, we, we just watched like a month ago. Joe Biden looked confused. He couldn't even he couldn't even speak. But you're telling me he had enough thought process to write almost a two paragraph thing about this. At the end of the day, this is a this is a tragedy. And someone pointed this out. It seems like every time every year of election, the last three election years, it seems like there's always been one major black death by the police and it's been used for campaigns to you know to get people to vote for one side and this has to stop do not let this situation sway you one way or the other now you kind of know where i'm hitting that when i'm when i'm talking about this but like i said you know it's youtube and we all know how people get about politics but at the end of the day yeah police need those body cameras uh every police force needs them and there needs to be more swift action like this because at the end of the day police even if they even if they quick to pull the trigger, they will think twice and they know they can, uh, their lives and careers are going to be ruined. Because a lot of officers, even with that body camera, you know, there's a lot of people in the force. Uh, that's my brother. I ain't about to send him to jail. All of a sudden, the, the, the camera footage pulls a David Copperfield and disappears. So, you know, there needs to be uh, a, a lot more, um, uh, you know, punishments like this. Swift justice. You know, he's going to get his trial. But he, not, he should not be walking around you know, having a good time with his family when he ruined one family. So, you right. know, this these situations, you know, it, it's sad that we got to talk about it. But you know what? Thank God for that body camera because I saw the video. It was horrible. You know, I, I, I don't even know how to feel. I don't even know how I would feel knowing that I was about to take my last breath at the hands of something oh, fucking I, cop. That, that didn't even deserve it. We're not talking about a, a, a dude, you know, was high on drugs or a girl threatening to throw the water on the cops. Like, this is unnecessary, unjust, cruel, violent, first-degree murder. And he is getting charged for three counts of first-degree murder. To lock him up, throw away the key. This man do not deserve to get out. And I'm tired of police getting preferential treatment, too, because that's one of the reasons why a lot mm -hmm. of police officers do what they do is because they know at the end of the day, justice is going to be on their side, whether right. it's a short sentence, they're going to get their pension, right. or even if they have to retire, they're going to get some type of benefit. So, you know, we, we're in this day and age now. We're starting to shift a little bit. But again, like you said, we need actual policies involved. And, and, and until we actually enforce them and get people elected or whatever the case may be, local, state, federal, we need people who's actually going to pass these laws. Because if they're not, we're screwed and we're going to be, you know, we're just going to be another right. victim. Right. And, then, and and let me let me say something for the dumbasses who, you know, where the fucking Black Lives Matter people after George Floyd and you know, all that shit and, you know, the people who are, you know, protesting, whatever, not to say that, you know, a lot of them didn't mean well, but let me tell y'all something. How the fuck do you feel knowing that you did all of that in vain? You did all of that shit in fucking vain. Nothing fucking happened. 
for all that protesting and rioting that you niggas were doing. Because the same shit happened again. It's been happening. That shit happened four years ago. How many times have we talked about a black person getting shot since then? Mad times. Mad times. Don't you motherfuckers get tired of this shit? This is what I'm saying. This is not about Biden. This is not about Kamala Harris. This is literally about the fucking people. You got to be smarter. Seriously. Seriously. Like, stop being sheep and just going going with the flow. Going with the flow. Let me just say what everybody else is saying. Let me retweet it a couple of times. Put it on my story a couple of times. And then that's it. Until somebody else. Like, all of that shit happened in vain. That's what I'm saying. Like, let's stop letting these people die in vain and make some shit happen. Because if we're all saying one thing, we need laws. If if 20 million people are saying we need laws and we're being ignored, then that, that really raises a fucking magnifying glass, an even bigger one, to an already racist country and government that we're living under. That's what I'm saying. When you're strategic. So if we all say we need laws and we're being ignored and we got the world stage and everybody knows that they're not doing what we want, then that's going to really hold them accountable. That's really going to want to make them move because they don't want to look bad to other fucking countries that they have relationships with. And unfortunately, we don't again, I always say we don't have a black superpower that is looking out for us. That's going to want to hold this country accountable. So we have to be the ones to do it. And there are ways to stay proactive, like I said earlier. But if we're constantly waiting for a handout from a country that didn't really even fuck with us in the first place, then we're not we're going to be waiting a very fucking long time. And how many hundred years has it been since black people have been hung from trees, raped, you know, shot, murdered, kidnapped, all types of shit. So on that note, what are your thoughts? Please be sure as always to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.